welcome to today's video. I'm very excited to mention that today's video is sponsored by Love Skinks Rescue. You can find them on Instagram, Patreon, and their website. And you can also subscribe to their newsletter for updates. But I'm going to have all their information in my description. So basically just a little background of Love Skinks Rescue. Also, my shirt came from them, which is so cute. I absolutely love it. So what's really cool about Love Skinks Rescue is that they're located in North Carolina. It's run by Dan and Liz and they are the sweetest people of all time. Like they reached out to me and they're just so kind and so passionate and so supportive. So they really do deserve all the support in the world for the amazing things that they're doing. So basically a little background of what they're doing is that they are obviously a skink rescue. So they specialize in all types of skinks. So if you have a skink that you need to rehome or you know someone that has a skink that they can't take care of anymore, they will take those animals in and rehabilitate them and try to adopt them out and find them new homes. So um, one thing I do want to mention because I know a lot of people are like touchy about um, rehoming animals and things like that. There's no shame in rehoming whatsoever. There are circumstances that happen. People lose their jobs. People get sick. People move. Like there's so many different things. Like people's lives just change. And sometimes when those changes happen, we can't take care of our animals anymore. But fortunately enough, there are people like this rescue that literally specialize in taking these animals in and taking care of them and then finding them new homes afterward. So, and it's really great because even if the animal is sick or injured or something like that, they take care of all of that and make sure that the skink is in good condition before they adopt it out. So if you're in this type of a situation or you know someone that is that has any type of skink that they need to just get rehomed, all you have to do is ship it to them in North Carolina and they have information on their website on how to do that or you can just reach out to them through Instagram and just message them. They are so, so nice and just really, really great people. So do not feel scared to reach out to them ever. Um, another really cool thing about their website is that they actually offer education on there as well. So they've partnered up with some other YouTubers that specialize in skinks as well, including myself. And they have a whole section of all of my videos and other YouTubers videos that are all skink related. That way people can get all of the education that they possibly need on all different kinds of skinks. So they are just killing it out here. They're doing such amazing work. And it's so nice seeing like a personalized passion in skinks in particular because you don't really see that too often. And just to have like a specialized skink rescue I think is just so amazing and so cool. So definitely give them a follow on Instagram, check them out. If you don't have a skink that you need to rehome or anything like that, but you still wanna support them, you can support them on Patreon as well. They also sell merch just like this amazing t-shirt. So go ahead and get yourself a cool reptile t-shirt. Um, all of the money that goes towards the Patreon and the merch and all of that, they literally just put back into the animal's husbandry and the medical bills for rehabilitating them. So they are just so, so, so cool. So please check them out. I highly recommend them. Just one of the coolest rescues I have ever heard of ever, and I just love it. Um, so with all of that being said, we are now going to dive straight into the skink content. I have not done a skink video in quite some time, so I'm pretty excited to get into this. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about blue tongue skinks and all of the things that you need to buy if you want a skink. So there are going to be a couple of differences because it depends on what type of skink that you have. There are blue tongues that are Indonesian and northern blue tongues. So there is a little bit of a care difference there, but I'm going to go into that in depth and like let you guys know that we are getting like all of the proper things that your skink is going to need. So the very first thing that your blue tongue skink is going to need is an enclosure. There are a couple of different options out there when it comes to housing a skink, especially if you have a baby. You can put it in a smaller enclosure and upgrade over time. However, I think that it's just better to just upgrade to a larger enclosure that they're going to need as an adult anyway, because they're going to grow into it fairly quickly and you'll just end up saving yourself some money. And a lot of people are worried again about stress from putting like a small animal in a large enclosure. And it's completely fine as long as you fill it out and give them enough hides. If it's just like a large empty enclosure, that will cause stress. So that's why it's important when you do get a large enclosure, just to fill it out for the animal. So basically a minimum for a blue tongue skink, whether it's Indonesian or Northern, is a four by two enclosure. 
So because there are a little bit of care differences with Indonesian and Northern, for Northern, you can get away with a wood enclosure. However, for an Indonesian, I would recommend going with PVC just because it is better for lasting with um, exposure to humidity, which Indonesians absolutely need high humidity levels. So PVC is just a better option to go. Depending on the heat aspect, um, I will get into that a little bit later, but if you are using a heat pad, then you without a doubt will need a PVC enclosure and not a wood one. So I just wanted to add that in there just to clarify. Um, and then also for the size of the height, um, so skinks do not climb very much. So I typically, what I use for my blue tongue skink is a four by two by 16 PVC Zen Habitats enclosure. And it is perfect for a blue tongue skink because you're able to save space by not offering a ton of height that they just wouldn't utilize. So I just, I absolutely love it. And that's what I recommend all the time for blue tongues um, is the 16 inch tall. If you want to go a little bit taller, there's like four by two by twos and that's perfectly fine too. They just won't be like utilizing all that height, but you could just like mount lighting inside of that size. So that also will work out as well. So if you are interested in a Zen Habitats enclosure, my link is in the description for them as well. It is my affiliate link. And if you guys have any questions about Zen Habitats, just ask me in the comments and I'll get to it. So the second thing that you're going to be needing for your blue tongue skink is a large shallow water bowl. So blue tongues, um, again, humidity is gonna be the factor of difference with Indonesians and Northerns, but both of them are going to need water just to drink from. So, and they have very, very short little corgi legs, so um, they can't swim very well. You just shouldn't have like a really deep water dish. A shallow water dish will be the best option for these guys. You just want to make sure that you fill it up enough that if they did like go inside the water bowl, they would not be drowning and they can lift their head out of it and stand up without like having water coming up to their head, if that makes any sense. Um, so yeah, just got to make sure that we're keeping them safe while hydrating them. So the next thing that you're going to need is substrate. So substrate is very, very important for blue tongue skinks because they absolutely love to burrow. So substrate is not something that you can skip. I would not recommend using paper towel or just a mat or carpet or anything that's just flat on the bottom is not going to be adequate for a blue tongue skink. And then with Indonesians, it's going to be a little bit different than the Northerns. So with Indonesians, because they have a very high humidity requirement, I would recommend something like a cocoa husk or repti bark. I personally use Josh's Frog's bio bedding, which I absolutely love, and I top it off with forest floor moss. So this is a really great substrate for all of the options I just listed are great for retaining humidity when you spray down the enclosure, which you're gonna have to do with an Indonesian because of that humidity requirement. So um, what's really great about adding the moss on top is that not only is that also going to latch on and hold on to that humidity, it is also going to form great burrowing opportunity for your blue tongue, which they absolutely love to do. It is what they do like 50% if not more of their life. So um, definitely important to add that if you have an Indonesian. So then for a Northern, which is a drier species of a blue tongue skink, um, they do not have that high humidity requirement whatsoever. So something that I recommend for them that also allows that great burrowing opportunity is to use Aspen. So Aspen will allow them to make like little tunnels and it'll just be a really dry environment, which is what they need. So it's just very important to make sure you know which species you have. That way you're giving them the proper care. I have a video going over all different types of species and identifying them as well if you need help. Um, but that is like a very significant difference is when it comes to the substrate for the blue tongue. The next thing you're going to be needing is heat for your blue tongue skink. So there are a couple of different options. Um, there's one in particular that I favor above the rest. Um, the one that I don't really like too much is heat pads. So some people keep skinks in racking systems. I'm not really a big fan of that either. Um, but like breeders that just don't have the space, like I can understand temporarily, but like 
So a lot of the times when people are doing that, they're using heat pads, which obviously it gives the animal heat, which is good. However, it's just not natural for them. And I have noticed because I actually started out using a heat pad and then I switched to a heat bulb and I noticed that my blue tongue was way more active and out and about way more and just seemed healthier and happier with a heat bulb rather than a heat pad. So, and it makes sense because naturally in the wild, they would just absorb the heat from the sun. So if you wanna like see natural behaviors and replicate a natural environment for your skink, I would recommend going with a heat bulb. Next up is UVB. So UVB is actually not required whatsoever with your blue tongue skink. However, it can be beneficial and it is a great way to, again, just make it a more naturalistic environment for your skink. So if you can offer it, I highly do recommend to do it. Um, so if you do want to offer UVB, what you're looking at is a T5 5.0 or a Shade Dweller Arcadia Bulb would be adequate for a blue tongue skink. Number six is more things to burrow under because as I mentioned, burrowing is just very important for blue tongues, especially when you're putting them in a new tank in a new environment, they will feel very stressed and exposed. So they need to be able to hide in order to feel safe and it's just very important for them. So different things that you can use again for burrowing with substrate, like I mentioned, but there are other things that you can add as well, such as foliage, plants, cork bark, and even hides. You can just add straight up reptile hides into your enclosure as well, and they will utilize it. Anything that they can use to get away and feel safe and secure in their environment, they will use. Number seven is plants. So when it comes to plants, um, as I mentioned, skinks love to burrow. So if you wanna go the live plant route, which would be great for Indonesians and boost humidity, the only issue is that they might kill those plants and dig them up and completely brutalize them, which is things that I've dealt with with my skink in the past. So because of this, um, if you don't wanna go the live plant route, um, which if you do, I highly recommend joshesfrogs.com for live plants because they have a huge variety. I'm pretty sure they have a whole blue tongue skink section for that as well. Um, but if you don't want to do that and you want to use fake plants like what I do, because obviously they won't die, which is nice. It's a great guarantee. Um, if you do want to go with fake plants, the best thing to do is make sure that you are getting plastic plants rather than fabric because fabric will latch on to like poop and bacteria and get really gross over time and be very, very difficult to clean. So you want plants that are going to be very easy to clean and plastic is super easy to clean. So I highly recommend if you just want to add like some foliage and fill things out and just not deal with dying plants, fake plants can be a great option for that. Number eight is enrichment, which is one of my favorite things to talk about when it comes to keeping any type of reptile. So enrichment is going to be all of the different smells and tastes and feels and just all the different textures in the enclosure, things for your skin to check out and just get their brain working. So different things that you can add throughout your enclosure to also make it more naturalistic would be different textures with sticks, cork bark, leaf litter, moss, um, different types of hides, all of those different things and substrate, rocks. If you're gonna use rocks, make sure that they're not small enough for your skin to actually eat because they may get impacted by that. So if you wanna go with rocks, use larger sized rocks for that. Um, but all of these different things and plants are just so great for enrichment. So the more that you can add and change things up for your skink, the better. Number nine, I kind of mentioned it earlier um, when I was talking about the heat, and it is the temp gun. Temp guns are extremely important to be able to measure the actual basking area of your skink to make sure that it is in the correct range. You can also measure the ambient temperature and like the cool spots. So I think that they're just very handy and any reptile keeper should have one. And the last thing is a shallow feeding dish. This is very important because <laughs> skinks, again, have very, very short legs. And if you are trying to feed them in a bowl that kind of is like, like, you know, cupped up kind of high, it is extremely hard for them to get in there and get their food. And you will see 
the struggle, like the struggle is real. So a shallow feeding dish, you can find reptile ones at reptile stores or even just like use a plate. A lot of the times I just use little plates for my skink. That way he can just climb up onto the plate and then eat his food and not have too much trouble. So that is today's video. If you guys can come up with any other things that you think are needed to shop for, if you wanna get a blue tongue skink, please go ahead and leave it in my comment section. I would love to see some of your favorite products that you use for your skinks as well, whether it's substrate, any type of leaf litter, all the things, like we just wanna hear about all of it. Um, so I hope that this video was helpful. Please check out Love Skinks Rescue, please. They are so amazing and they deserve all the support in the world. Um, so yeah, I will see you guys in the next video and I hope you have a great day.